Our final speaker this morning is Kevin Self, who is the Vice President for Strategy and Corporate Development at Johnson Controls uh, and responsible for global strategy de development for their $15 billion building efficiency business. Uh, he has two degrees from the University of Michigan uh, in engineering science and a master's in bioengineering and an MBA from Northwestern, and he'll speak about the future of green buildings. Kevin, welcome back to Thank the mission. Thanks, Mark, and also thanks for fixing the M. My, my, middle, my oldest son's a senior here in mechanical engineering. My middle son is a freshman at Wisconsin, so I thought he was sort of playing with us to turn our M into a W. Um, but, but thanks for having me, and I'll uh, try to make up a little bit of time. There's three things I want to talk about today. Uh, one is to give you an overview of Johnson Controls. A lot of people know us for our automotive business. Um, is where we have a big presence here in Michigan, but we also have a, which I'm going to talk about, a, a pretty outstanding uh, building efficiencies business. And I'll talk about a, some re survey results. That's our seventh annual survey, which is just completed. So who is Johnson Controls? As I said, we're about a $42 billion world-class organization, actually headquartered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our, auto, our automotive experience business located here in, in Plymouth. You can see our vision, our mission, our values. Um, and also it's interesting, so the building efficiency business that I'm in optimize building environments for more than one million customers. Uh, every day we're walking into 30,000 different sites across the world. So 14.7 billion, 60,000 employees at building efficiency, including 5,000 energy experts and over 1,000 lead professionals. And we also are on seven continents. And as this is a smart group, there are only seven continents. And so we do have a presence uh, at one of the scientific stations, at, on the scientific station in Antarctica. And so we can truly say we're a global company. Uh, we're also in 152 countries, and you can see about 700 branches. 20 million square feet of LEED certified, more than seven and a half billions of savings guarantees. We have worked with buildings across the world, mostly in the U.S., to guarantee the energy savings through working with us. 19 million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions reduced, 100 plus renewable energy projects, and 1.8 billion square feet of real estate under management. So we like to say we see beyond bricks, mortars, bricks and mortars to create lower operating costs, sustainable solutions, higher productivity, healthier workspaces, and connected environments. And just in terms of the history, so Warren S. Johnson actually uh, invented the first thermostat in 1885. And so we've been in business for a, a 128 years uh, of some great innovation and look, uh, look forward to keep that going into the future. And so let me tell you about the, uh, the energy efficiency uh, indicator. And so the seventh annual indicator survey drew 3,000 respondents from 10 countries and there was 486 respondents from the United States. Uh, we also had 1,500 respondents from Asia. The building efficiency business, I know there's been a lot of talk today about sort of U.S. and China. We actually, building efficiency, only have about a billion dollar business in China that's growing at about 15% annually. And so we have a huge present worldwide, but really the growth markets that are driving us is both North America and China. So how important is energy management to your company organization? 37% of U.S. respondents are paying a lot more attention to energy efficiency this year compared to last. And I'll give you the corollaries of what we're seeing in Asia. In Asia, it's up 43%. So Asia, a little bit more looking forward in terms of uh, what they're looking about in terms of energy efficiency. In 2013, 41% globally say energy management is extremely important to their company, which is about a 117% increase since 2010. Companies are paying a lot more attention to energy efficiency. There's been a 10% increase year over year, and the, uh, let me jump forward. Also, majority of executives continue to report they will increase investment in energy efficient renewable energy projects, but the activity actually remains flat. And so there was actually a drop of 4% for those investing in energy efficiency despite the stated plans. And the question is why? One partial explanation, and actually this has been mentioned earlier today, is that the uncertainty surrounding government budgeting and tax reforms. 41% of U.S. respondents say they reduced investment last year because of this. Now let's take a look at some of the technologies they're using to drive this. 
So over the past three years, the mix of technologies hasn't changed much. There have been slight decreases in lighting and HVAC improvements, although they remain the most popular. One that has increased is smart grid, smart buildings technology, with over a quarter investing in these. And someone, I think maybe Phyllis had mentioned this earlier, this whole space of smart buildings is an interesting one. And similar to the conversations earlier about how industries change, in sort of the history of Johnson Controls with our HVAC equipment, our chillers and our air handlers, that's long-lasting capital investments. And so those will last multiple years, 10, 20, 30 years. What's happening much faster is the change in the data. And the amount of, uh, the amount of data that a building such as this is putting out, and then what can you do with it? And so what we're seeing, we actually have a relationship with Cisco. And we had a, a kickoff event last February called uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, General Electric has their industrial internet. Cisco has the Internet of Things. And what they've identified is that the smart building space worldwide is about a $350 billion profit market. If you were to take a look at all the opportunity that exists in all these buildings, $350 billion of opportunity is there waiting. And I know there's going to be entrepreneurs talking later about ideas. This is an intriguing space, which there's a lot of experiments on going right now. One other point in terms of this space, in terms of the other potential market sizes, a couple years ago, McKinsey put out a report saying, what if we could reduce 30% of the energy uh, usage out of all buildings in the world, which is an okay standard to use. You can then say that this is actually a $750 billion opportunity. And as we've talked about all the issues with the greenhouse gas, it's a great opportunity to say, how do we start having all of these fixed structures start using less energy going forward? So we confirm that there is a relationship between companies with energy reduction goals, their investments over the past year, and their planned investments. There has been a trend for more organizations to set goals, whether they be set and communicated internally or made as public co uh, commitments. It's not surprising, though, that setting goals has a positive effect on investment and improvement. And we all know that from our personal experiences. What we did notice, though, is a difference in terms of those that are publicly stating the goal and those that are not. So if someone's not stating that there's a goal, the percent that plan to increase investments about 26%, they put about 2.8 measures in place, and you can see that about 55% have invested in energy efficiency. When they have an internal goal, it moves to 56%, 3.6 measures, and 88%. And those that are going public with these goals, you can see the great results. And so doubling the number of respondents that have public goals intend to achieve voluntary green building certification or net zero facilities, do you intend to achieve voluntary? It's gone from 38% for no goal and 85% who set the goals. And also 73% of organizations intend to achieve nearly zero net zero or positive energy status for at least one new facility. So let's talk about tenant space. Another big finding this year is that 30% of organizations are willing to pay a premium for leased space in a certified green building, up from 25% a year ago. 27% are willing to make incremental investments to build out their leased tenant space to above code. And last year, there was discussion around the Clinton Global Initiative high performance temp tenant demonstra demonstration projects that is proving the business case for green tenant build outs and providing tools to assist. So this effort appears to be in tune with the market and the greater desire for energy efficiency and better financial returns. And so organizations with public goals report a variety of drivers for pursuing energy efficiency beyond cost savings. And you can see on the right that cost savings is about 35% energy security, government policy, brand value, and property value. We've talked to uh, an individual who was involved with the C40 project under Mayor Bloomberg in New York, and he says, we all focus on you know, the Empire State Buildings, which Johnson Controls had a, a great uh, part in driving the energy efficiency of that building. But he says, if you look at all the Class C buildings that exist, even in Manhattan, the opportunity existing on those buildings is much, much more than you'll ever see for this Class A space. So how do we start driving some of the attention to all of these buildings versus just the iconic? And so 30% of organizations with public goals took advantage of external financing. And organizations with public goals and external financing implemented 84% more measures and are 2.7 times more likely to increase the investment next year than organizations with neither. Policies that improve project economics remain at the top of the list. Tax credits, incentives, or rebates, 25%. One of the things we've seen is dependent on the owner's time horizon really drives if they're going to get involved. The private sector 
Uh, typically, it's looking at a three to four year uh, return on investment for their investment. The public sector much more willing to look at seven to 10 years, which is why we've had a lot more success doing work in, in the public sector up to this point in time. Let me take, take a couple of minutes talking about green buildings specifically. So we see green buildings as being grid responsive, resilient, efficient, energy positive, and networked. And so demand response. We actually bought a company two years ago called Energy Connect. And so the purpose of this is you have the utilities who are throwing out all the supply, then you have buildings such as this and others who are using the demand. And on certain days in the year, when there's huge issues, actually we saw it, I think, about a year ago in India, where there's, I think, about 150 million people without power due to a brownout. And so what you're able to do is certain entities say, I'm willing to power down if the environment gets so difficult and the utility will pay me back a refund that is more than I would have been charged had I used the electricity. And so you're starting to see this much more where entities want to get real time to determine how do I make these changes. Over the last couple of years, it's actually been a phone call. And you have to find the facility director who says, are you willing to, to raise your temperatures in the summer to take part? The intent is to get it to automatic. So if I'm the facility director of this building, I just input all the data, and it happens without my even knowing it. Great growth opportunities. Also, actually, after the, uh, the uh, tsunami in Japan, a lot of discussion about how they can manage uh, their electric grid. And this is one of the areas that they're looking at pretty closely as well. So 15% of United States organizations participate in demand response programs. We see that doubling in the next five years. So 51% installed or plan to install distributed generation with reliable fuel sources to provide power for extended periods. We saw someone talking about uh, combined heat and power earlier today. We're starting to see these ex examples as well. Actually, I was reading an article on the plane last night coming out that um, I think the FDA had an entity on the East Coast during Hurricane Sandy. Basically, they are their own grid. And so they had no power issues uh, during, during the event. 39% installed or plan to install solar panels with a secure grid disconnect mechanism to use as an emergency backup system. 46% of organizations intend to achieve near zero, net zero, or positive energy status for at least one facility. This has been a huge discussion of can you get to a net zero? So can you get to the point where actually this building is actually throwing electricity back to the grid? And there's a lot of debate about this, and it's both the supply side and the demand side. Demand side is how do you truly alter the usage of electricity in this building to minimize it down at the same time using uh, solar, using wind, using other entities to provide more power. One of the beliefs I have is within five years, the way that the HVAC and the lighting will be maintained within this building is not by some controller that exists, but it'll be all of the devices all of us walked in here with. And so this room now knows that there's 120 people in this room, so we better kick on the chillers and start driving air into here. And in 10 minutes when we all leave, it'll dissipate and you'll allow that temperature to start going up. There's actually a number of companies that are starting to experiment with these type of ideas so that these fixed products that you have within buildings may be uh, uh, gone in the next, uh, say, 10 years. So smart buildings are rated the second most likely to increase in market adoption over the next 10 years. And this is a space that we play heavily in, that how do you take all the works that are ongoing within this building and connect them together? And so the HVAC equipment, the lighting, everything that's going on, security, you pull it all into one and you're looking at it as a, as a system as opposed to an individual entity. And so just in closing, interest in energy efficiency is increasing 10% year over year while investment remains flat. Organizations with public goals implemented 50% more measures than organizations without goals. Organizations with public goals and external financing are 2.7 times more likely to increase investments next year than organizations without. And two-thirds of organizations planning to pursue green or net zero buildings. One-third of organizations willing to pay for more space in green buildings. So organizational commitments supported by cost-effective external financing have been shown to increase investment in energy efficiency, which we know provides building owners with lower costs, good financial returns, and our communities with good jobs and a cleaner environment. Thank you.